This is the Defence School of Photography in Cosford. The entrance to the building is said to look like a roll of film or a camera. And this weekend, past photographers got the chance to visit the school where they learned their trade. We have the open days uh, where veteran photographers are coming along to reminisce. Uh, and the events are culminating with a centenary gala dinner at the RAF Museum. The Defence School of Photography or DSOP celebration weekend is also being marked by the opening of the Centenary Room. It holds equipment, photos and stories right from the birth of defence photography through to the modern day. We move on to the military interest in photography from this gentleman who was a Sergeant Frederick Victor Charles Laws and he was placed in charge of the first dedicated photo section at Farnborough. He was commissioned in the Lincolnshire Regiment and this took place in about 1914, just at the outbreak of the First World War because at that time there were very few photographers available and there was a crushing need to expand the training into a formal school. We're moving on now to Ernest Brooks, who was a young uh, commissioned second lieutenant in the British Army. He was sent to the Western Front to become the first official army photographer covering the Battle of the Somme from the front line. And he was joined later by Sergeant Warwick Brooks, DCM, Distinguished Conduct Medal, and they were one of the first official army teams who actually covered all the fighting from the trenches in the front line. How important do you think it is in terms of um, documenting conflict photography? The most important thing to remember is that without photography, you don't have evidence. The room also features a camera that was used by Lieutenant Keep in the original Great Escape. Lieutenant Keep managed to bribe the prison guards at Stalagluff 3 with cigarettes and chocolate and he managed to persuade them to get him a camera which he then used to forge the passes and permits for the escapees. The exhibit also tells the story of Lawrence of Arabia who enrolled as an RAF photographer in 1922 under the name of John Hume Ross but due to media pressure he left. Since the Defence School of Photography opened, they have trained over 51,000 members of the military in essential photography skills. And it was back in 1972 that the Joint School of Photography opened, training all three services under one roof. All military photographers who come through the Defence School of Photography cover all aspects of the trade on their 28-week course. Okay. Aircraftman Jack Wilson has just three weeks to go before he graduates from the Professional Photographer's course. It's been a long course, it's been very enjoyable, but I'm looking forward to get out into the big wide world of the Air Force and put my skills to good use. This is a very small part along with uh, air crash, uh, crime scene investigation, uh, but we go through portraits, uh, PR, many different techniques, um, and then we briefly look at air-to-air -air photography, air-to-ground stuff, surveillance, operational, all kinds, everything you can imagine really. And as cameras change, often helping the mobility of military photographers, the Defence School of Photography can look forward to another 100 years. Jesse Arrow Phillips, Forces News at RAF Cosford.